how do you hire in your business? I know you also have an all female team, so amazing. Um, but tell me, how do you how do you decide what functions you're going to hire? What's the um, and how do you develop and grow that team to I guess so that you can trust them and you can then focus I guess more on the business rather than in it. Yeah, I think it's a tricky, it's a tricky thing, right? Like over nine years at our highest, we were up to 16 employees. Now we have four. I've gone through different methods of thinking about how to do this. I'm also a first time entrepreneur. So full, full of mistakes over here. Um, but at first it was, well, let me hire as many people as possible. You know, let me hire a social media manager. Let me hire an assistant. Let me hire and what i what i personally realized along my entrepreneurial journey is i think there is something to the gig economy there's a reason why uber and airbnb and fiverr and um upwork and a ton of these companies exist it's because there are experts in their specific niches mm. that do things really well so i have now sort of evolved over the past three or four years and taken on of a more uh, Marvel Avengers model. Um, <laughs> I know that my team is not gonna be the best to do social media. I know that my team's not gonna be the best to build you a website, but I have lots of friends, again, in my entrepreneur entrepreneurial community that it's like, great, let me inter introduce you to James or let me introduce you to Rachel or let me introduce you to, and we can all work on it together and that'll be amazing. But Rachel is really A plus at this. And if I try to do this with my team, it's gonna be like a B minus. It's passable, it's just not A, it's like B minus. And so I'd rather partner with somebody who's gonna do something A plus so that mm -hmm. I can do my best things at A plus. And then we're all sort of, we're all on our highest function. And so that's just, again, the, the approach that I've taken, but I think for every business, it's it's completely unique. Um, we're run like an agency. So for us, it's really about finding the people that are specialties in that niche and sort of plugging them in into our larger machine. Great, and I'm, I'm just gonna ask a, um, I do wanna bring the investors on as well, but I, I'd love to sort of speak very um, candidly about women entrepreneurs, being a woman entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice which you'd like to impart on the audience today or any, and not the, not the, not the ones we hear at all the networking events. Like I want to get really deep, the stuff that you're like, you know, this was something I really struggled with as a woman. Um, I really, if I could help other women, this is the piece. This is the thing that I would like to give as a, as wisdom. How much time do you have? No. <laughs> um. I would, say, I would say two things. One, um, I think as women, I, I'm still guilty of this. I'm constantly working on it, but uh, we have this superman complex of like, I can do everything. And I absolutely despise books like Lean In. I just want to take <laughs> them and burn them in the trash can. Um, <laughs> I don't think you can have it all. I don't think it's work-life balance. I think it's work-life choices. And I don't think you can make the banana bread and take out the trash and get the kids ready for school and run a multi-million dollar company and volunteer at the soccer game. Like it's just not possible. These are just the, it's the illusion that everything's possible, but it's not, it's choices. So I would say to ask for help. Um, I think as women, we are uniquely, um sort of i'll do it sure no problem i'll have them i'll help out and you're just kind of like this bobblehead of like no problem and at some point it, it is that you do need help um and whether that's you can't get groceries you have to get fresh direct you know you cannot go to the grocery store or no you need to hire that virtual assistant because you actually can't keep track of when your appointments are so it's it's getting the help and, and recognizing that you need help uh, i think that's one unique to women and i think two for me i found that i need to have two groups of friends and one is other female founders and one is sort of like corporate job friends uh, oh, very unique. You cannot go to dinner uh, with all your friends that work at corporate and complain about the same things that you can complain about to other female founders, where you can say, oh, I'm trying to raise this bridge round and these angel investors or whatever. Your corporate friends are going to be like, what? 
glazed over <laughs> eyes. What are you talking about? Huh? What happy hour? Like just no concept of what you're going through. And so for me, it's really about having those two buckets of friends mm -hmm. and utilizing them both in different ways. And both are important, just they serve different functions. So that that would be my two biggest takeaways as a, as a female entrepreneur. Yeah, no, love that. Ask for help and two buckets of friends <laughs> with context. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Sarah would love to hear your side as well. Yes, I love that. And I couldn't agree, agree more. It's all about, you can't do everything. You just have to choose two or three things that you're going to do really, really well and forget about the rest and don't feel guilty about it. It's the one thing I would add is I think we tend to feel bad. Don't feel bad. We've got to make those choices. So my advice is one, I think being an entrepreneur can be a really lonely thing. And I didn't really realize that because I thought, oh, my coworkers are really annoying. I'm going to love having my own business. Uh, but it's actually really, really lonely. Even when you have employees, I mean, they don't, it, it's different. So join those networks early and often, and definitely the ones that are focused on women entrepreneurs, because I have found I just really get something diff different out of those groups. Okay. And my second piece of advice is really to be yourself. As a woman, plus all the other aspects of your identity are so important that we have those things in our leadership. And I think women like us that step up and take our chance and start our own company, we're really claiming a transformational opportunity. Women can see themselves in their leadership. And at Leota, the CEO has a pension for red lipstick and leopard print and a voice of a kindergartner, but I'm mm -hmm. the boss. And my voice uh, has the authority. And so representation really matters. Be yourself, the world needs it. Love it. I think that's like a perfect way for me to segue to the investors. Thank you so much, girls. And I will totally bring you back on um, for our Q&A and jumping in and out. So. Um, I'll get the uh, the moderators to help us just flip over on the tech side. Great. Yes. Thank you, 